Hey everyone, this is Dan with School of Sheet Solutions Consulting. I am a senior Smart Sheet Solutions architect, and today I will show you how to create a project schedule in Smart Sheet, turn it into a calendar, and then upload that calendar. Basically, you publish the calendar so you can view your Smart Sheet data in your Google Calendar. You can use it elsewhere. I'm just going to show you Google for today. So I'm going to start. I'm going to use one of the Smart Sheet templates. Um, if you're not aware, if you open up your sandwich menu here, click this plus button, you get to the solution uh, center. They have a ton of different templates. You can search for whatever you want. You can look by these various uh, variables here. I'm gonna look for a schedule and I'm gonna use this construction schedule with Gantz. Some of these templates are pretty nice. Uh, a lot of times you do have to customize them to meet your needs. They're reasonably generic, um, but they're a good starting point nonetheless. This one comes with a Gantt view. I'm just gonna hide this because we're not working with the Gantt right now. Let's get rid of their conditional formatting and start from scratch. There are a lot of tasks here. I don't think we need this many for the purposes of this demonstration. So let's just go ahead and delete the majority of this. All right, so this has been magically reformatted. There's some just basic conditional formatting in place to give some color to the different statuses and the percent complete is on kind of a moderate heat map. Um, regardless, so here is our schedule as it currently stands. And the goal here now is to get it into a calendar view that we can use in Google, you know, in an inside outside of Smartsheet. So there's basically a pre-made calendar available. All you need to do is in any sheet, go from grid view to calendar view. And now you have a, um, a calendar view and you can see you get some basic information about the task and there's some ranges of dates here. So you might want to configure this. And it looks like everything's basically during this month. <clears throat> so you have a few options um, in the settings. So to get to the settings, there's this wheel in the top right calendar settings you can choose only one date to look at. So this is when everything's starting. You can change it to your end date. If you have other dates in here, you'll have more to pick from. Or you can use a date range, and I'd suggest you pick different date fields for your start and end. Okay, and there we go. That's basically the range of dates. The summary tasks here, so let's swap back to the grid view. As you can see, the summary tasks are gonna be any of these parent rows that are um, have rows nested underneath them. So from a uh, just a perspective of semantics, first of all, it's too big. Um, if there is a row in the sheet that has a higher level hierarchy row above it, that would make it a child. So this, for example, is a child that has one, two, technically a parent and a grandparent, two ancestors. This is a parent row, which has two children, these guys. This is a parent row with three children, etc. So the summary tasks are gonna be any of those parent rows of which we have three house remodels, start date and demo prep. If we go into the calendar view, the summary tasks, regardless of their overall hierarchy, if there is a parent row whatsoever, they will be gray. You can't change that, it's just the way it works. However, you can change the color of the individual tasks and that's done in the conditional formatting of which I just added quite a bit. <clears throat> so uh, this is basically in the default situation right now where they're all gonna be blue. However, we can change this as follows. So a common way to do this is to conditionally format based on status. You could do it based on priority, you could do it based on who the person is assigned to. Basically, any column you have in your sheet, you can use that to create conditional formatting to color your calendar. You can also just leave it as it is. Some people like a more simple view. The beautiful thing about Smartsheet is you have a lot of options. So let's make some rules to conditionally format based on status. Oh, where are you? We'll use both. So pretty simple um, conditional formatting here. We are going to base it off the value and status field. So or column, field column, uh, same idea. So let's take anything that is not started 
and we will give it, oops, we need to go to this format. We are going to format the taskbar only. Um, I almost always will do taskbar formatting separate from row level formatting because to format the taskbar, you need to apply the formatting to the entire row. A lot of the conditional formatting that I prefer to use and that I, I think people find useful is you might be formatting only one column or a couple of columns in the sheet. You know, because if you are to put these darker colors across an entire row, it's going to be pretty distracting. Though in the calendar view, I think um, it makes it a little bit easier to see. So we're just going to reproduce this for our various statuses. You can, at this point, we can clone the rule and let's go to an in progress. Green means go. So we're just going to change the formatting of the, oops, wrong button. We're going to change the formatting of the taskbar here to this. Um, my video controls are getting in my way. You can do the dark green. You can do, I actually kind of like, oftentimes I'll use the built-in smart sheet status symbols, which have specific colors. This is the green that matches that symbol. So I just first method of consistency. We're not actually using those symbols in this sheet, but, um, force of habit, I suppose. And now our last one. Complete uh, project management standard blue is what you use for completes. Some people like gray, however, in this exact situation, remember that uh, overall task summaries are going to be gray and you can't change that. So it can be kind of confusing to have those same colors. So let's make it blue. And this bottom one here, I guess as a side note, if you make a new rule and then don't actually do anything with it, you're not going to, and you're not going to be able to save anything. You have to make sure every rule you make has a condition or you just gotta delete it. So now we have a calendar with a start and end date for our various tasks, as well as our summaries. Everything's kind of colored in a way that makes sense. So we can quickly look at this, see, all right, we're working on the contract. We're working on the appliances and fixtures. We got the final estimate. We have the permission to schedule work and we have a few things on the horizon here and we're set to complete this project by the 26th. So now we need to take this calendar and put it into our Google Calendar. You can publish this to a Google Calendar and sure, that's fine. So if you want to do this, you're gonna actually sign in with your Google account. So, so I just authorized a new account and you're going to push oh, your close action. Okay. It's close. And now we got to open up the Google calendar and check it out. And here we are in our lovely Google calendar where I selected this account for the publishing to push to, and we can come in here and we can see that we'll get this little message that was published from smart sheet. And if you want to go and edit anything, get the link to the sheet. So you can click that, tell Google, everything is quite all right. And you can actually go there. And now we're back in action and we can make some various changes. So uh, one important thing to note is that this is a one way street from Smartsheet to Google Calendar. If you come in here and edit something, it will not change it in the sheet. So you can make a bi-directional system using the API or using something like Zapier, which is a third party API manager. And that way you can have changes go back and forth, which can be useful. Um, but you know, it's really important that you keep your data accurate. So if you're using this one way sync, definitely make any changes into in Smartsheet for it. this project is now going to start on the 16th. Let's save that. So we just changed this to 1116 and now 1116, maybe the, um, demo prep, or technically this is a summary, so we need to change the lowest, or the first rather child. Let's push this out to, we're fine, we can remove our predecessors just for method of example. Generally speaking, um, you might want not want to move your predecessors around. But now you can see um, the dates change. So when you make the changes in Smartsheet, the various changes will appear in Google Calendar. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, please hit the like button. If you liked it, consider subscribing for more smart educational videos.
If you don't have Smartsheet, there is a link in the description box to get a free 30-day trial. And if you are considering Smartsheet or already use Smartsheet and have um, an interest in getting some help, we do provide um, consulting services for setting up new accounts, managing existing accounts, add-ons, etc. You can find all that information at schoolofsheets.com or you can email info at schoolofsheets.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.